I think the main be benefit of the digital Accublade is uh, superior tissue handling and discriminating layer by layer the exact tissue that you want to resect for margin. There is virtually no collateral tissue damage with the, the technique. Uh, when, you, when you choose the proper settings, you can, it's almost as if you haven't operated on some of these early stage laryngeal uh, cancers. It's spectacular uh, and it's, uh, it's fun to use. The benefits for me personally are the ability to dissect the tissues, the ability to see the interaction of the tissues better due to the decreased thermal damage. In cancer and other work, it's extremely helpful to not be creating a large char, but to be able to dissect the tissues. And while you still see the tissue interface of what is cancer and what's not cancer, you can also not destroy the surrounding tissue so that you have a better, uh, a better ability to identify what's happening at that level. Larger tumors are resected blockwise. By transecting the tumor, we can identify the real extension, the spread of the cancer. For example, to the paraglottic, to the preapiglottic space, to the cartilage or to the neck, which is then followed and resected according to its spread. The tumor is divided into manageable units with a laser beam. And each unit is exposed and removed stepwise until the cancer is completely excised. This unconventional technique, introduced by us in the early 1980s, is justified because the lymphatic vessels of the wound marching are sealed immediately, as shown by Jochen Werner from Marburg, 1993. We have not seen an increase of neck or distant metastasis during long-term follow-up uh, using our technique. In previously non-treated patients, an experienced surgeon is able to distinguish between healthy and diseased tissue with the help of a magnifying microscope and thanks to the specific cutting properties of the CO2 laser. So in terms of minimization of deep and lateral uh, thermal damage, you know, the, the scanning delivery of the laser beam is really the key there. And how the laser is set up at the console by the nurse or the laser nurse or the surgical assistant or whomever it is that is pushing buttons and setting things up. But by telling the laser what size and what kind of a beam you want delivered, that helps to minimize the lateral and deep damage because in so doing that you are you know telling the laser or you are programming into the laser uh, the depth of penetration and the uh, size of the spot that will be scanned so it's a great laser then to do photoablative work for recurrent respiratory papillomatosis especially as you get close to the human vocal fold and and or treating superficial spreading variety of papillomatosis where you know scanning that that, that uh, papilloma as it spreads out on the vocal fold the ventricle the false vocal fold of the subglottis allows you to literally uh, photoablate layer by layer by layer and, and it's just exquisitely precise as the scanning technology can take down levels of papilloma until you know you are to the base and no more. The estimate is, is something on the order of 250 microns or, or a quarter of a millimeter uh, per scan and I think that's probably accurate because that's, that's what it looks like is you're just taking uncapping and uncapping. It's, it's almost like taking sausage cuts of the tissue until you're down to the tissue you want to preserve. And I think this laser does that in a way that a traditional, even an ultrapulse laser would not without the scanning. The scanning is the key. The circular pattern, if we could have a circular pattern of two millimeters with a depth of two passes or roughly 500 microns with each pass, we'll then be able to ablate superficial spreading papilloma. Laser on please.
in this manner, relatively large areas can be treated superficially, shortening the overall operative time. Suction, please. decent view. Care is taken not to expose tracheal cartilage. By ablating the papilloma superficially and then suctioning off the injured papillomatous epithelium, one can get down to a nice clean plane and avoid injury to the tracheal rings. With this approach in this patient, we've been able to reopen her subglottis and achieve adequate voicing. And then the carbon dioxide laser can be used to either incise the base or ablate superficially the top of the lesion. Laser on, please. Because of the diffuse base size of this lesion, suction, please, a decision to ablate rather than excise was made. Again, knowing that this lesion is somewhat deep, we can turn the depth of penetration per pattern generated up to roughly 750 microns. This results in a slightly longer scan time. But the depth of the lesion can better be assessed and the lesions removed slowly to avoid inadvertent injury to the underlying tracheal wall and structures. By treating in the midline, the edges of the papilloma appear to shrink in and the lateral extent is better appreciated, particularly on the right-hand side. One can readily see that we don't have to extend as far laterally on the right as we would have appreciated at first. Just by treating the base, we can watch the right lateral aspect shrink inwards towards the middle. This allows us to preserve all of the tracheal mucosa along the right lateral tracheal wall at this level. Injudicious removal of tracheal mucosa results in excess scarring. Using the laser in a repeat delay mode or in a shuttered mode, in addition to pulsing it, allows us to deliver laser energy precisely and the minimum amount needed to complete the task without inadvertently damaging normal mucosa. Well, there are a lot of systems, and, and I think the microspot technology and the ultrapulse or superpulse, those various pulsing laser technologies have been around for a while. And they do provide a benefit to tissue uh, preservation, they are accurate, they can deliver laser energy where you want it to go. What they don't have is they don't have the scanning robotic, basically robotic joystick. So that if I, if I don't touch the joystick at all, I can program it to go in a circle, in a line, in various configurations of size and, and intensity uh, such that I can ablate just what I want to ablate and preserve what I want to preserve. So if I'm lifting up a, a flap of, of tissue and I'm actually incising this tissue and trying to lift up a flap of viable tissue and then vaporize the scar that's underneath it, I can do this without damaging this surface tissue. And then I lay the tissue back down at a better depth. Because that spot is moving and I don't have to worry about how smoothly I'm moving the joystick, 
it accomplishes the cutting and ablating in a so much in so much more a precise way that it's tremendously better. I can move my finger accurately, but I can't beat a robot. A robot has me beat, hands down. There's no question. And that's what does it. That's what does it. It preserves tissue. It accurately cuts. It allows you, that's, actually that's even one dimension. That does it, but it also um, allows you to, um, to operate with a laser more safely.